Hey everybody, welcome to yet another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're going to cover a grammar pattern that is quite complicated and the reason behind that is because it's one of the grammar patterns that kind of has multiple meanings depending on how you use it. And so the grammar pattern that we're covering today is going to be X to tomo ni Y to basically mean Y along with X. So the phrase to tomo ni can be translated to a number of things. It can be translated to with, together with, along with, as, as well as, while, when, and etc. And so as you can probably tell from all of these various uh, subtly different meanings, depending on how we use this grammar pattern in a sentence, it can carry a different nuance. And so in general, the three main nuances that this grammar pattern can carry are the following. So the first one's going to be the easiest, it's basically just going to be Y together with X. And this will pretty much be identical to the grammar pattern that is to isho ni to mean together. Next up, for number two, we have Y at the same time as X. And this is also pretty quite simple, it's going to be rather identical to to doji ni, which is again going to translate to at the same time as or simultaneously and that is the grammar pattern that of course we covered in the previous video so go check out that video if you need a refresher on to doji ni to mean as at the same time as or simultaneously as and now for the third last nuance this is probably going to be the most prominent and the most distinctive of this grammar pattern and it's basically going to convey that along with a certain something that changes which will be represented by the variable x in the construction something else changes alongside with it which is going to be y okay so getting into the actual grammar of this grammar pattern similarly to again the last grammar pattern that we covered to doji ni this grammar pattern can be used with basically all kinds of words adjectives nouns verbs blah blah, blah all of them when we're using this grammar pattern with verbs we have to use the verbs in their dictionary form furthermore when we use this with nouns or e adjectives we just basically use the words themselves no particles or any phrases to add after them or anything and then with not adjectives we do have to add an extra phrasing after them and that is going to be the phrasing de aru which is the same as the last grammar pattern once again so the not adjective followed by de aru plus the phrasing of this grammar pattern which is to tomo ni is how we're going to do that for not adjectives and with all that said and done now let's just jump into some examples because we'll probably benefit more from getting an intuitive look from this so for our first example sentence we'll cover the first nuance for our second example sentence we'll cover the second nuance and for our last two example sentences, we'll cover the third nuance because that's probably the most important one and distinctive, like I said. So for example, sentence number one, we have the line Chichi to haha to tomo ni yuenchi ni ikitai desu. And so what this line will translate to is just basically I want to go to the amusement park with mom and dad. Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up, we have Chichi, which is the noun for dad when you're basically referring to your own dad. We have to to mean and, it's a particle here. We have haha to mean mom basically when you're referring to your own mom and so mom and dad is going to be the x in our grammar construction here so right after x we have to tomo ni so this is going to be the nuance that means together with so this is together with mom and dad literally together with and now we're going to insert the y in the construction which is basically going to be whatever we're trying to express and that expression is going to be yuenchi ni ikitai desu yuenchi is the noun that means amusement park we have ni marking as a destination and we have the verb iku which means to go in its tai desirative form to mean to want to go so ikitai uh, then we follow that with des to end the sentence so i want to go to the amusement park add that to the first part of the sentence i want to go to the amusement park with mom and dad literally just together with so in japanese once again that is chichi to haha to tomo ni yuenchi ni ikitai desu and so yeah that is using this grammar pattern to mean together with quite literally um, and it's probably the most simple, like I said. So now we'll move on to the next nuances. So for our next example sentence, we're literally going to reuse an example sentence that we used in the previous lesson that covered to doji ni because this particular second nuance is going to be identical basically to to doji ni in that it means at the same time as or simultaneously as. So for our line we have ginko de goto to tomo ni kaji ga okota. And of course this line will again translate to at the bank 
a fire happened at the same time as a robbery, basically. So let's break down this sentence bit by bit. First up, we have Ginko de. Ginko is the noun that means bank. We have the de marking as the location of an action that occurred. We're going to employ our grammar pattern now. So we have goto, which is a noun that means robbery. So we just have to add to tomo ni right after it. And that's exactly what we do. And now we add the rest of the sentence, which is whatever we're trying to convey. And that is kaji ga okota, which kaji means fire have the ga marking as the subject and okota to mean occurred in plain past form so a fire occurred at the same time as a robbery at the bank ginko de goto to tomo ni kaji ga okota and so yeah that's basically the second simplest nuance in this grammar pattern because it's identical to to doji ni and even if you mix them up they're not going to be grammatically wrong if you use one or the other for our last nuance we're going to convey that a change occurs along with another change. And this is the more distinctive nuance of this grammar pattern, but that's not to say that there aren't other grammar patterns that can probably convey the same thing. We'll probably see them soon enough. I can't think of any on the spot right now, but they definitely exist. So for our first example sentence for this nuance, we have these pretty simple line, Bunka wa jidai to tomo ni henka suru. And what the sign will simply translate to is just that culture changes alongside basically the passing of times or by generation. So let's break down this sentence. First up, we have the line bunka, which means culture. We have the wa particle marking as the topic of the sentence, and now we employ our grammar pattern so far x. We just have the noun jidai, which means kind of time or period or generation. Since it's a noun, all we have to do is plug in to tomo ni right after it. That's exactly what we do. And then we have our y, which is whatever we're trying to say, and that is going to be henka suru. It's a verbal noun that means to change, basically. And so altogether, that quite simply turns into bunka wa jidai to tomo ni henka suru as culture changes alongside the passing of time or with each generation. And we can see how it's a really simple sentence, but it does kind of carry a deep nuance. We see that both Bunka and Jidai are things that experience change and their changes are occurring alongside each other. And now for our last example sentence, we have the line Seicho suru to tomo ni sekai kan ga kawaru. And what this line will translate to is just basically your outlook on the world will change as you grow up. Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up, we have the verbal noun Seicho suru, which means to grow up, to mature basically. Since this is a verb in its dictionary form, we can now just simply add to tomo ni exactly what we do and now we have our why and that is going to be sekai kan ga kawaru and sekai kan is basically going to be your world view or your outlook on the world we have the ga marking as the subject and then we have kawaru which is the intransitive verb that means to change and that basically completes the sentence so now when we bring it all together it's just going to be again seicho suru to tomo ni sekai kan ga kawaru as as you grow up or as you mature your worldview changes and so yeah we can see how both again these two things that we have x and y are things that develop or experience change you growing up or maturing is quite representative of change as well as your worldview developing that is also a change and they happen alongside or with each other and that's basically what this grammar pattern is expressing uh, not so much that they occur at the same time, but that Y is kind of influenced by X, as in you have to mature and you have to grow up in order for you to experience this other change of your worldview changing. And the same goes for the example that we did before this, culture, it changes, but it has to have the prerequisite of time changing as well. We can't reverse that and say that time changes as culture changes, that doesn't make sense. So if I just mess with our culture right now, then automatically a thousand years pass. That is not the case, it's the opposite. So X and Y in the construction aren't interchangeable. There is an importance to the order that we put them in and that is a keynote that we need to make note of in this grammar pattern and yeah. And so that's how we're using the grammar pattern that is X tomo ni Y to mean again a number of things with the first being simply as together with, the second being at the same time as, and three, the third one being this rather much more complicated nuance of as something X changes, something else Y changes along with it. And so yeah, as we continue to release lesson after lesson after lesson, your knowledge of the Japanese language increases with it. So let's uh, keep working hard, yo!